Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's all we're going to read. One verse. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to talk to you this morning using as a title, When the Storm is Over. When the Storm is Over. This very simple, very short passage of scripture begins saying, therefore, therefore being justified by faith. When we look at that word, therefore, if we are to be true, to our attempts to rightly divide the word of God. Every time you see the word therefore, you have to go and dig a little deeper to find out what it's there for. And I tell you that in this particular situation, as you read this word, therefore, you have to understand that therefore is not there for the purpose of just connecting the end of chapter 4 to the beginning of chapter 5. No, as, as the word therefore is used, it is designed I, I need to stop for a moment and, and ask this um, out of respect to the house of God. This room is a sanctuary. This is where we come to worship our God. We cannot allow this room to deteriorate to the point where we treat it like any other place. So, quietly, without drawing attention to yourself, if you are chewing gum, I ask that you Quietly put that away. And then we will move on. Amen? Amen. The word therefore is not used just to connect chapter 4 and chapter 5. But it is designed, in this case, to take as a summary of everything that has happened from chapter 1 through chapter 4 to Bind it all together. And then create the back end of a cause and effect relationship. A cause and effect relationship. Cause and effect. That, that's saying that because of this, then that has happened. It, 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 it's, it's a cause and effect. It helps us to explain why certain things happen. This happened because of that. It is a cause and effect relationship. Uh, 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 it, it's like this. Uh, uh, I went to grade school. And after I had fulfilled the requirements of first, second, third, fourth, fifth and then sixth grade, then as a result of that, uh, therefore, I was promoted to middle school. Uh, when I got to high school, after I had completed the requirements of ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, I was promoted to a graduate of high school. Uh, I, I say all that because what's happening when you use this word therefore in this particular situation is saying after you have learned everything that happened in chapter 1, 2, 3, and 4, therefore this happened. What then is it? What then is it 
that we learned in chapters 1, 2, 3, and 4. We learned that because of sin, our fellowship with God had been broken. Because of sin, church, we were messed up. Because of sin, uh, our relationship with God was irretrievably broken. Because of sin, God had built us up, but we had fallen down. We learned also that God hates sin. God hates sin, but God loves mankind. Look, look, God hates sin, but he loves the sinner. We got to learn something about that because sometimes we hate the sinner because of the sin. But God hates the sin and he loves the sinner. Oh, y'all got to get that. Look, we got to love the sinner. Because love is the uniform of the Christian. My Bible says, by this all men shall know that you are my disciples. How? If you have love one for another. We got to love the sinner just like God loves the sinner. But he hated sin. And even though man had become sinners, he still desired to spend eternity all of eternity with those who would choose to worship him. Those who would determine that I will voluntarily choose you, Lord. Although I may have many choices in life, I can choose to worship you or I can choose to run from you. He said, I want you to choose me. He, he wants to spend eternity Church, eternity with those who would voluntarily choose to worship him. All right, all right. Therefore, he allows us to be justified by faith. What does that mean? To be justified by faith means that God has deemed us to be righteous. Said another way, say this with me. It's just as if I'd never sinned. Just if I'd never sinned. That when I'm justified, it's just if i never sinned. That God will look at me, he will do what's necessary to make me just if I'd never sinned. And, and, and since you've learned everything in chapters 1 through 4, you've come to the conclusion, you understand that God is looking at you right now just if I never sinned. Look, but understand this. He says, being justified by faith. Understand, church, that means that there came a point in time, the, the very moment that you believed on the gospel. The very moment that you believed that Jesus died. The very moment you believed that he was buried. And the moment you believed that God raised him from the dead. You were saved and God deemed you to be righteous. And thus he gave you your ticket. To be able to enter into the very gates of heaven. But it also draws an inference. It draws an inference. Because it says this. If the text is saying being justified by faith, that that in fear infers that there was a time when I was not justified by faith. It means that there's a specific moment and there is a before and there is an after. Before being justified by faith, church, understand this, before you were friends of the world, Some of y'all pretending like you ain't never been a friend of the world. <laughs> and you can fool some people some of the time. But you can't fool God none of the time. 
See, being friends of the world means I like what the world has to offer. Being a friend of the world says it's okay to go out and hang out with Jack Daniels. It's okay to be in love with the Coco. I heard somebody say that one time. <laughs> Being friends of the world means that it's all right to go on on Saturday night, party till early Sunday morning. That's being friends with the world. But the Bible tells us that being friends of the world means being at enmity with God. That word enmity is not a word that we use very often, but it is a word that is very apropos. Enmity uh, uh, means that you are at hostility, in hostility with God. To be at enmity with God means that you are angry with God. It puts you in position to be an enemy of God. Ah. You all, everybody knows somebody that has hostility with God. That if you stand in their presence and mention Jesus, you'll see it in their face. The, the anger begins to boil up. They, 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 they get to the point in time when uh, 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 an angry storm begins to brew within them. And you've seen that angry storm before. You, you, uh, when the angry storm comes, the uh, uh, dark skies will appear. And when the angry storm comes, the, the clouds don't just flow anymore. The, the clouds boil when there's an angry sky. The, the, the wind becomes blustery when the storm comes. And, and the thunder begins to crash. And, and the lightning begins to flash in the air. Uh, metaphorically, what's happening then is, is that these people within them, that storm that is building within them, whenever you mention the name of Jesus, uh, is just like the same thing that happened while Jesus and his disciples were in the ship in the midst of the storm. And you know that feeling. I know you've felt it before. The songwriter said it this way. Uh, he said, uh, like a ship that's tossed and driven, battered by an angry sea. When the storms of life are raging and their fury falls on me, he said, I wonder what I have done to make this race so hard to run. And then he encourages himself. He, he says, I say to my soul, take courage. For the Lord shall make a way somehow. Y'all got to know, you got to understand that despite the fact that there may be a storm, I'm just letting you know that the Lord will make a way somehow. You look, look at it. when Jesus and his disciples were in the ship. Uh, look, while the wind was blowing so hard, uh, and, and while the waves were crashing against the side of the ship, and, and, and while the, the water was hitting the side and flowing into the ship, and, and while
now that the storm is over. Now that the storm is over, church, I want the sunshine to just rain down. Does anybody want the sunshine to just rain down? I want the sunshine to rain down on me. You see, because if the sunshine rains down, you can have joy even in the midst of suffering. Yeah. When the sunshine rains down on you, you can have comfort in the midst of pain. Yeah. Oh, but when the sunshine rains down on you, church, you can have peace. Yeah. You can have peace even in the midst of a storm. Yeah. I'm talking about a peace that passes all understanding. I'm talking about a peace that I can't explain to you. Yeah. A peace that I can't give to you. I'm talking about And they looked at Jesus. They looked at what he did. They looked at the situation. And they said, what manner of man is this? What manner of man is this that even the winds will obey? What kind of man is this? And even the sea will be still at his word. What kind of man is this? Brothers and sisters, can I help you out? He is a rock. And a weary man. In the time of storm, yes, sir. he is a cornerstone yes. that the builders rejected. Yes, he, is. he is the precious Lamb of God yes. that taketh away the sins of the world. Yes, he is the bread of life yes. and the living water. Yes. He is the Alpha yes. and the Omega. Yes. He is the King of Kings. Yes.
church was Sunday, Saturday morning. Yeah. Jesus was still there. Yeah. Saturday evening, you can still find his body there. Yeah. Oh, but something happened. Yeah. So something happened. Yeah. It was early on Sunday morning. Yeah. Early on Sunday morning. No things present, right. no things to come, yeah, no high. 